coming to you live from digital address GA099 2539 Kukumemle Accra on DSTV channel 421 and Go TV channel 144. You can join the conversation on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We are Joy News on TV. Our WhatsApp line is 055 815 7074. I'm Selinam Ampo and I am Mapito CBD. A lot of things trended over the weekend and Max is going to give us a breakdown of what happened. All right, so now I'm going to give you the top three things that trended over the weekend. Mm -hmm. Our first one is Isaac Dobie. Now, listen, Ghanaians went crazy over this. They were sad. And I mean, he lost his WBO World Super Bantamweight title on Saturday night. A point outpointed by Mexico's Emmanuel Navarte after a brutal encounter mm -hmm. in New York. Now, let's watch a bit of what happened in the ring. Right hand, left hook. I mean, he was just every punch, but I feel like Navarte threw. There were, Dog Bay had no answer for it tonight. His defense was lacking. He never could get off first. He never worked off the jab. He yeah. wasn't able to negate the, the reach and the size. size. Yeah, the size is what got him. And, and uh, Navarrete used it to his advantage. And he said exactly what he would do. He's like, I'll use my height. I'll fight straight up. I'll use my reach. And, and, and it was enough tonight. Well, he posted something on Instagram, and let's take a look at it. Let's see what he posted on Instagram. And we have Isaac, um, a picture of him. He says, Team Dogwe has accepted defeat because we underestimated Mexican Emmanuel Navarrete. We have learned from this experience, and we will come back stronger. God bless you all, and thank you to everyone who has supported us as hashtag and still Niho hashtag Isaac Dogwe hashtag Royal Storm yeah that's some comments a, a caption under his picture um, from Isaac Braf Dogwe yeah Brafsin now a lot of people were commenting and tweeting about this a lot of people uh, on Twitter as you can see this was him uh, you know accepting the defeat a lot of people were just saying that they were trying to take the title away from him. Uh, but we'll get Nathaniel Atto joining us uh, very shortly. And what are people saying on Twitter, Selena? Well, before that, let's take some Twitter comments that came over the weekend. You can still send comments on all our social media platforms. It's join us on TV. Did you watch the match? Did you watch the match? I watched the match. Is it? Okay, and, I didn't watch it. I, I was just watched, following on social media. Well, no, I watched parts of it. And mm -hmm. I think at one point, the boy was in the corner and he was taking some punches. And I felt like, oof, I can't watch it anymore. But let me take some of the tweets. And um, this is from Fifi Anaman who says, This image of Isaac Dogboy has trended today. Some have shared it as merely reporting his first career loss, while others have done so to mock him, either with a, with a jest or malice. But this image is one Dogwe will grow to cherish as a reminder of the price he had to pay for greatness. Comes with a very image. The image is... Ugh. Let's keep more tweets coming. And we have... Seabone Delmore, who says Isaac Dogwe did not perform like a champion last night. His punches and reflexes were slow. He completely underestimated Imano Neveretti. And Neveretti utilized his reach and height advantage wisely. Dogwe is still young. He'll be back. I do think he needs to get a real trainer. And we have Mac Junimo who says Isaac Dogwe should have avoided this bout. He needed time, but the father, as the purse was big, threw him into it. Real punishment. Check the dude's face. And we have Queen of Queens by Coco Tre who says pick yourself up, dust yourself up, and start all over again. That's what winners do. Lessons learned, better luck next time. Hashtag Isaac Dogbe with the Ghana flag and a nice image of Isaac down there. 
and we have G in inches G inches who says Isaac Dogbay's loss loss is the second most sorrowful thing that has happened in Ghana's sports history after Samwajan spoiled his penalty penalty against Uruguay we are still proud of them though and Lexis Bill says, watch Isaac Dogway's fight. And I must say, I'm proud of this young chap. What a fighter. Totally outboxed, but he will not go down without a fight. When setbacks arise, and they will, they will from time to time regroup, recharge, refocus, and refine. The Royal Storm will be back. Hashtag Neho. And we have this from the realest boss who says, judging from Isaac Douglas's face, it's like he was attacked by a mob. Did the guy stab him or something? Oh, boxing is indeed a deadly sport. First career loss, still a champ. Lessons learned. I'm scared. Hashtag realest tw Twitter award. Hashtag realest team. GH tweets. Hashtag M. Mr. Pac Teal. Sam Okujetua Blackwa says, Isaac Dogbe must retain our confidence and support. Moments like this show what real champions are made of. He fought to the very end, never gave up, never gave up, and despite his injuries, he exemplified tenacity. Neho will surely rule the world again, and I verily believe it will be soon. Hashtag still proud. And we have Abdul who says, I still believe in Isaac Dogbe. Losing is part of growth. We shall bounce back stronger. And we have a tweet from Nana Akufado who says, better luck next time to the Royal Storm. Isaac Dogbe, I'm confident you bounce back even stronger. Keep your head up. That's from our president who says, keep your head up. Well, we have Joy Sports editor Nathaniel Atto here to give us some analysis of what happened during the bout. Nathaniel, welcome. Thank you. Good yeah. to be here. Great. Um, you watched the bout. What, what, what did you expect the way to lose? Well, um, I mean, from what I've done in terms of following boxing over the years, uh, a loss for Dogbe, I mean, I didn't rule it out, only that um, I had to add a bit of the sentimental feel as well because I'm Ghanaian. But, you, you know, you put on your technical cap and mm -hmm. you, you're thinking, okay, there can be any outcome at all. But to be beaten to this extent, honestly, I didn't expect. Uh, knowing wow. the kind of journey that Dogbe has traveled over the years and, uh, you know, where he's come from to this point, I didn't expect that kind of, you know, um, that kind of um, uh, embarrassment in the ring. Well, he alluded his loss to technical bankruptcy. Do you think it's time for him to change trainers? Well, this is something that many have suggested, even at the time when he won the title. Um, and I remember very well that in a private meeting some time back, um, mm -hmm. this suggestion was made by someone, a, a top businessman in Ghana, to the team that, that he needs a beef up. I mean, not necessarily get his father off completely. Because you see, there's one thing that many people do not realize about boxing, that sometimes yeah. you, need the, you need that telepathy and that telepathy sometimes will only exist between people who are related one way or the other. Mm. I mean, this is his father. They've been together for so long. They are able to communicate in a certain way. And those things become very crucial, especially when it gets to the tough moments. So uh, you look uh, around the, the, you know, the globe and you see such relationships. I mean, um, the late Castamato, and he may not necessarily have been t Mike Tyson's biological father, but they had a certain bond and a certain relationship. Yeah. Um, I mean, you look at the likes of uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr., um, I mean, his uncle, uh, Roger, and his father, Floyd Sr., all of these people had a certain level of telepathy, and it always helps. It always does something magical when the going gets tough in the ring. Mm. So for me, it's not necessarily kicking his father off completely. Okay. I mean, he's known the boy from day one, and I guess that he will be a very big resource even if there's a shift uh, or there's a new uh, mind uh, you know, on the team. So for me, it's way to go. Bring someone in who can get his defense uh, upright and can get him to be technically upward so that such challenges don't overwhelm him. Okay. Well, what does this defeat even mean for Ghana as a country? It is, it is very, very bad. I mean, look, I, I, and I, I'll tell you this very honestly. I'm very, very up, 
appalled. I'm very, very, um, you know, infuriated by the mm. kinds of taunts I'm seeing on social media. For crying out loud, Dogbe is the best thing that has happened to Ghana this year. Look at the banking crisis. True. Look at what has happened True. with, True. Uh, you know, look at what has happened in all of our sectors. Yeah. Dogbe is the best thing to have happened to Ghana internationally. And for me, if our government knew how to make the most out of uh, you know, platforms such as these and achievements mm -hmm. such as these. By now, people, I'm sure people would have forgotten about uh, the banking crisis and how much money I Men's Gold so owes too. them. You I know, so um, that's the reason why I always pay respects to uh, Vladimir Putin, love him or hate him, because <laughs> Vladimir Putin knows how to make use of such, you know, we're sitting here, we're talking tourism, we want to bring eyes here, and this is somebody who Our has resource. global attention. Why don't we make him an ambassador? Mm. Let him start driving people here, sending people to the Volta region where he comes from. We've got loads and loads of water bodies there we've got loads of um, you know tourism attraction tourist attractions there why aren't we driving people through his platform and through his visibility you know so for me I find it a bit absurd that people are rather towing that line look when the gentleman won the title mm -hmm. we were at a very very torrid time in our history as a nation because there was a certain documentary called number 12 yeah. and he had shaken us to the bone to the extent that look people were uncomfortable in this country I mean uh, there was a lot of international embarrassment and this was the man who brought us some amount of joy and brought us some amount of respect brought respect to the Ghana flag yeah. so for me I totally disagree with those who are, are, to are trolling him and taunting on social media I totally disagree well, with him well. because you know quick thing is that Dogbe is a credible champion. And if I say credible champion, mm -hmm. he didn't just jump at it and get the opportunity. He fought his way through this. Yeah. He's gone through sure. terrible times. He's got, he had to shoulder so much difficulty in the lead up to winning this title. And so if he's lost today, look, Mike Tyson has lost before. I mean, Floyd Mayweather Jr. has not lost before, but he's, he's been overwhelmed in the ring before. I mean, uh, Oscar De La Hoya has had his bad day before. Yeah. Lennox Lewis has had his bad day before. Uh, Evander Holyfield has had his bad day before. Even our very revered Azuma Nelson has had his bad day before. For me, it is a learning curve, and I'm looking and observing, I'm looking at and observing Team Dobby and seeing how they will recover from this. This can prove a great moment of recovery and a big story that they can tell but later But before on. you run out of the studio, um, what's your final advice to him? Well, like I said, there are so many examples, but the, the only one that I've been talking about after his loss mm -hmm. is his own compatriot, Joseph Agbeko. Joseph yeah. Agbeko back in 2009 fought Yoni Perez mm -hmm. and lost to him in a margin that was way bigger than the margins that we saw on the three scorecards. What did uh, Agbeko do? He went, sat back, and within only two months, came back came and back. reclaimed the title from Yoni Perez. Yeah. That in itself is a great example. Dogui doesn't need to look uh, too far away. The example is right here. The example for inspiration is right here. And that example is in uh, three-time world champion Joseph Agbeko. Thank you very much, Nathaniel. That Pleasure. was Nathaniel. And, you know, a lot of people have said so much about Dogbe. And Dogbe has done well. To me, he has done well. The president said it. Keep your head up. You never know. You can win the next one. All right, away from boxing, let's go to something that shook the streets of Accra, that shook the streets of uh, social media, and that was the tremor in Accra. And the Ghana Geological Survey Authority is warning an earthquake is imminent following strings of tremors that shook parts of Accra. Now, the latest tremor was experienced in parts of the capital Sunday morning at about 7.50 a.m. It lasted a few seconds but shook buildings and causing a little scare to residents. Selenam, where were you when this happened? Well, I was home. Mm -hmm. I was home and I was reading Facebook comments and tweets and people said, hey, my house was shaking, my house just shook. And I was wondering what's happening. So I, I went online to read about it. And apparently that was a, an earth tremor and surprising. And you, you, you'd be amazed that we keep hearing that there's going to be an earthquake, earth tremor. We don't take it seriously and one day it happens and everybody's in panic. But let's take some fa um, twi um, Twitter comments and Facebook comments. Um, well, this is Facebook. We have earth tremor experience at McCarthy Hills and it's environs this morning chai i nearly went out naked this is from togwi donko and we have emma who says wager at tremor early sunday morning god help us
And Sally says, had to carry my soup from the stove. <laughs> Farida, who says, I experienced an earthquake or whatever tremor you guys call it when I was little. Google tells me the last severe one in Ghana happened in 1997. So yes, I have those memories. I remember seeing my mom's neatly arranged Aifro plates clattering from the room dividers in the hall. The building kept turning and shaking and I felt dizzy. My mom asked that we all step out into the compound. My sins were not that many then, so I wasn't as scared. I was so innocent and naive. If that same thing happens again, I don't know how I'd feel. This small tremor, Seth, I almost ran out of the office. Charlie, judgment day go be rough. By now, some angel is getting ready to sound the trumpet like bubble -li bubble. Repent, guys, it's not too late. Interesting comment from Farida. Keep all your comments coming on all our social media platforms on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. It's Joy News on TV. We have a comment from Atu Akins who says, Accra people, how many of you felt the earth tremor? The shock emoji right there. And Elvis Ohimi Mensa says, Just experienced an earth tremor in the Wager McCarthy Hill area. My heart just missed a couple of beats. Roland Walker says, where was the air tremor or turmoil experienced? Well, so now what Roland Walker is saying is that a lot of people on social media mm -hmm. were referring it to as a turmoil instead of a tremor. So okay. people weren't getting it. They were just saying, oh, turmoil, turmoil. And then it's like, no, it's a tremor. And uh, Joseph Akable, you can go to my join line and Latif Adrisu. They told us about the experiences and how Joseph Akable just ran out of his room and mm. went to his siblings like, didn't happen, didn't happen. But like, luckily for me, I was at church. So, I mean, you know, I was telling a friend of mine that if I was at home, I probably would have been scared. And if it was judgment day, I am very glad I was in the house of <laughs> the Lord. Uh, but people were also talking about it on Twitter. Let's see if yeah. we can get that. Uh, you know, you can catch us on Joy News on TV, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Now let's head to Twitter and see what people have been saying about the tremor. Number zero five five eight one five seven zero seven four. Let me take you to the last trend of the week. Uh, you can go to our Twitter page and see what everyone has been saying about the tremor. Just type in tremor. Now this is our last one. This picture uh, surfaced on Facebook uh, and, you know, a lot of people was like, okay, so what's happening here? This is now called the Nana Delight Challenge. At first mm. there was a Kalipo Challenge. Yeah, now, I remember that one. Yeah, people were saying that, hey, money be sweet, oh, like money <laughs> be sweet. Now you can drink Nana Delight Challenge and a lot of people were talking about it on social media. Let's see what they have been saying. And we have a picture. It, it says, let's walk, let's drink, happy delight. The challenge is accepted. Hashtag fam, happy farmers day. Hashtag nana delight challenge. Hashtag happy delight challenge. Comes with an, a nice image of a young man holding the happy delight drink. <laughs> and this is Akosia Akoto who says, challenge Phil nana aren't you, be, nana didn't use a mug in drinking that. And from Eugene, who says, to from Calipo to new what new delight, and James Boriam, who says, when your boss failed to finish his drink, comes with another image of a young man in a mug with happy delight. More images popping up of people drinking happy delight. Um, hashtag Nana Delight Challenge. Another image of Senior Fred in Senior Fred Kumi's post who says who is also drinking um, happy delight in his office. Joseph James Aqua also with the happy delight challenge, even in a healthy life t-shirt. Happy delight tropical on his desk. And someone comes in saying, yesterday this happened during during our break. Hashtag Nana Delight Challenge. You're still watching Joy News Interactive. We'll be back shortly after this break. Mm -hmm. 
So today marks World Human Rights Day and today is observed every year. Every 10th December we observe the Human Rights Day and it's the day the United Nations General Assembly adopted in 1948 the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. This year, Human Rights Day marks the 70th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, a milestone document that proclaimed the inalienable rights which everyone is inherently entitled to as a human being regardless of race, color, political affiliation, religion, sex, language and you know any other social status, property, birth, you know you know what I'm talking about maps. Now as the chair of the United Nations Human Rights Commission, mm -hmm. Eleanor Roosevelt was the driving force in creating the 1948 uh, Charter of Liberties which will also and always will be her legacy, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Now, let's watch a video of Eleanor Roosevelt addressing the United Nations on the ratification of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Yeah. We are all agreed, I'm sure, that the Declaration, which has been worked on with such great effort and devotion and over such a long period of time, must be approved by this assembly at this session. In giving our approval to the declaration today, it is of primary importance that we keep clearly in mind the basic character of the document. It is not a treaty, it is not... That was Eleanor Roosevelt addressing the United Nations on the ratification of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948. Antonio Guterres, the Secretary General of the United Nations, had this to say about the Human Rights Day. For 70 years, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights has been a global beacon, shining a light for dignity, equality and well-being and bringing hope to dark places. The rights proclaimed in the Declaration apply to everyone, no matter our race, belief, location, or other distinction of any kind. Human rights are universal and eternal. They are also indivisible. One cannot pick and choose among civil, political, economic, social, and cultural rights. Today, we also honor the human rights defenders, risking their lives to protect It's been a wonderful edition of Joy News Interactive. Mm -hmm. Remember, you must always protect and respect other people's human rights. We're all human and let's respect each other, religion, race, sex, whatever you may identify with, respect one another. That'll be all from me, Mapisa CBD. And I'm Selina Ampo. Goodbye for now.